Now, a young cystic fibrosis sufferer who raised tens of thousands of pounds to build a school in Uganda has left a lasting legacy. Charlene Barr from Dollingstown near Lurgan started to raise money while waiting for a double lung transplant. Sadly, she died before seeing the school built, but her brother David has now written a book about Charlene's life and he's here in the studio with one of his other sisters, Rebecca. Evening to both of you. Good evening, Tara. Good evening. David, why did you write the book? Well, really it had been when Charlene was unwell and I still remember the time that she actually talked to me about this. I was at university at the time, Charlene was in the city hospital and after lectures every day I would have come down to see her. And whenever one day we were just sitting and we'd ordered, Charlene would always uh, often order dominoes in or something like that. We were uh, having dominoes together and she just said to me, Dave, would, do you know what, I would really like you to write my story story if you're happy to. At the time I said, Charlene, well, why wh why would you not do it? And she said, well, I'd like you to do it. And I told her, I'm not necessarily an author in, it, in any shape or form, but she really asked me, asked me to do that. And at the time she wanted to do it to give, Charlene was adopted and for a long time she really wrestled with her identity, the fact that she was loved unconditionally. And for a long time that was a struggle for her. And she really had said to me, Dave, what I want is I want you to write a book and I want you to write it so that it'll give hope to others who have, uh, in terms of come through adoption and so on, and are, uh, are adopted and are struggling with their identity. And she also wanted the story told of Uganda. And at the time, I really did hope that it would be after the transplant, we would talk together, we'd sit down, we'd talk through the different sections and everything, and it, the end of the story would be of Charlene healed, of having new lungs. But tragically, that wasn't to be. But again, we would go out to Uganda every single year and we would visit the schools that Charlene, through Charlene's dream, through Charlene's vision that are built. And every time we go there, yes, it's not as whenever I originally started thinking about the books, about it's not as I hoped it would end, but every time I go out there, it's like I'm really seeing Charlene again in many ways because mm -hmm. that is where you just see her dream fulfilled and know that the story isn't at an end. And was it difficult, though, to write the book and at the same time write it while you're grieving? In many ways, when it happened, um, I was just physically unwell just at the start of it. would have been 2012 when I really uh, started to write things down. Sharon had passed away in 2010. And in all honesty, whenever she passed away, I did kind of throw myself into my work and kind of didn't really talk about it hugely to some extent. And partly because there were still the four younger sisters. I was the only boy and the oldest. And I kind of, in my head, wrongly, thought that I had to be strong for them. So I didn't really articulate or talk hugely about uh, how I was feeling personally. And really, I have to say, writing it down, it really helped me to kind of really kind of process a lot of what I was thinking and to really honour what Sean had asked me to do and to see how, what she had lived for, what she cared about, her passion, her heart, and as well as that, see how, in terms of what Sean, Sean was a Christian and a really strong faith, in terms of how she had really lived her life, how she saw it as her identity and how we did believe that we would see her again and that the story was not at an end. It really did personally help me as well in processing everything. And Rebecca, I mean, I had the privilege of meeting Charlene and the, the rest of the family um, whenever she was waiting on the transplant and it was a hugely difficult time mm -hmm. for all of you. Do you think mm -hmm. the book has helped the wider family? Davis obviously talked about how it helped him. Yeah, it definitely, definitely has. And even reading through, um, you know, what David has written down, it brought back so many memories and so many happy memories and good memories and also the, the challenge for each of us us that Charlene's dream isn't finished mm -hmm. and that all proceeds from this book go directly back yes. to Uganda and a door has also been open to further the work in Guatemala which our family are heading out um, this summer to see can we do similar work in two villages there mm -hmm. um, as what's been do done in Uganda and it really has even reading through the wee extracts from our journals and everything again it's really brought back to life you know we have to continue Charlene's dream mm -hmm. and it's really given us almost a fresh inspiration to mm -hmm. keep going and to really see her dream fulfilled both in Uganda and Guatemala and as mm -hmm. I said all money is going directly back in into those into the work there. And even though she was adopted, there was never any difference made. No. She was so much no. a part of your Not family. at all. Charlene came to us whenever I was three. So as far as I ever remember, she was always one of us and you know, most definitely one of the family. So yeah. And are you proud of it, David? Um I'm proud of Charlene's life and story because mm. the, the really good thing about it was that we were able to go through her like in terms of her journals, her blogs, and they're all included in extracts, just the key sections, along with a lot of photos of memories that brought a lot back, a lot back to us, and really happy memories as well as some hard ones. And whenever you see her blog entries and her journals, I mean, 
inspires and challenges me. She has she had such a vision that she didn't see the end in Uganda into just being two uh, two schools and that being it. She's left us a lot of work to do, <laughs> and she had such a heart for so many people. And it's just it's really encouraging. And every time, even re scanning through it and really reflecting on Charlene's life. It really does challenge me daily, and I forget the lesson so so easily, but challenge, challenges me daily to think, what are we really living for? What really matters? Because ultimately, at the end of all things, what mattered to Charlene wasn't in terms of anything about money, about prestige. It was the simple fact of living for others and putting others before herself. And she was not perfect by any means, and the book does outline she was human, just as any of us are, but she had a dream, and she put everything into that. And I guess it encourages me in the fact that uh, me, in spite of my weaknesses, in spite of my flaws, for any of us, that we can be used and we can have an impact way beyond we can ever imagine. Listen, thanks so much well, indeed. Thank you very uh, much. Such an inspirational story and great to have it uh, down on paper for other thank people to, to read much. it. All thank the best. You. Thank you.